Welcome to another edition of Talk City Greensboro, produced by GTN, featuring interviews and events happening around town. It's an easy way to stay in the know while you're on the go. Subscribe to Talk City on iTunes, Pandora, Google Play, or SoundCloud, so you can keep up with what's going on in Greensboro City government and beyond. I'm your host, Rodney Dawson, and I wouldn't be as appealing if I didn't have a wonderful <laughs> rosemary plow by with me. I'll take that. Very nice. Great to be here. Uh, you know, for its founding, Greensboro has a rich history in education. We hear a lot about Guilford County schools. We also hear about our private and charter schools. Today, we're going to hear about one of our faith-based schools. And joining us from Benet Shalom Day School in Greensboro, head of school, Susan Siegel. Hello and welcome. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Thanks for asking me. We are glad so glad. Here. Okay, tell us a little history. How did the school get started in in in, in Greensboro, and why is this why why here? So it's a 53-year-old school, mm-hmm. and um, it actually got started because there were founders that, thank goodness, are still with us, and they had this vision to have a Jewish day school. One of them in particular thought it up in her kitchen one day, um, sitting with her daughter in a high chair. Mm-hmm. Her um, brother was a rabbi, and he was visiting, and he said to her, so where's this baby going to go to school? And she said, you know, I'm not sure yet. And he said, well, you need a Jewish school. And so she, um, and other women, it was actually. Oh, I love that. Um, yes. Um, founded by women founders who decided to create this wonderful school. And um, I'm so happy they did. Absolutely. How many founders are still with us? Um, I think there are there are five of us. They're all still with okay, us. We good. actually honored them for the 50th anniversary of the school three years ago. And you said it's 53 years, so I'm doing the math. That's what, 1970? 1970. Okay. All right. And going strong. Yes, yes. Now, absolutely. you're the head of school? I am. Explain to us what that title is. What does that mean? So, um, I'm like a principal, except I'm also in charge of the business end of the school as well. So, both the educational pieces and the business end of the school are my purview. Talk a little bit about the program, the programs that you offer. So we are an infant eight weeks through eighth wow. grade school, yes, um, which is amazing. A lot of changes in there. <laughs> yes, a lot of developmental changes. Yeah, make that clear. You said eight weeks. <laughs> eight weeks eight to weeks. eighth graders, yes, yes. Um, and one of the things I think is really special is that the, the big kids love the little kids. Mm-hmm. And um, so we really are, we're a true community, but we're also a family. And um, we have buddies. The big kids are buddies with the preschoolers, and that's one of their favorite things yeah. about the school. Lots of fun. Yeah, I, I was big in the uh, technology. I, my master's is in instructional technology. I fell in love with that when I was teaching. So, uh, what about the technology in the school preparing students for this this global competitive globally competitive market? Uh, how are you uh, approaching that aspect of learning? So, um, first of all, it has to be developmentally appropriate because when they're they're little, we we don't want screen time. But as they get older, um, in K to eight, they have one-to-one iPads. We have um, smart boards in every classroom. The kids use their technology a lot. We also have coding and robotics. Um, And we have a makerspace called a Fab Lab. Mm. And that has a laser printer and it has a um, a bunch of 3D printers, but it also is just regular stuff. Um, that's how it started, actually, with just people donating regular stuff to us. Um, but it became more technological, technologically savvy. Yeah. Um, as, I want to go to the go. Fab Lab. Yeah, the Fab Lab is fabulous. Um, yeah. And the kids use it typically to make um, projects. We're po- project-based learning mm-hmm. um, school primarily. Um, and we really want them to learn how to persevere persevere and fail. So um, they need to understand how to give feedback and how to receive feedback. Mm. I know um, for me, receiving feedback as a child really hurt my feelings. Mm -hmm. Um, And I don't want that to be the case for our kids. I want them to be able to receive feedback and and be fine with it and move on and make it make them you know stronger because guess what it doesn't feedback doesn't end when you get done with school Absolutely. no <laughs> never ends yeah. it never and, ends and you're reinforcing their coping skills yes. uh, in doing so and that's that's very good yeah. uh, talk about being a Jewish day school in today's climate in today's in, in what we have going on in the world right now, I, I know that it has brought a lot of challenges. Yeah, it, it actually has. Um, anti-Semitism is, you know, getting more and more um, in our faces. Mm-hmm. Um, very sad. Um, 
but security is is very strong at the school and it allows us to do what we need to do to teach and um, you know that is wonderful I think we're one of the safest schools out there mm -hmm. um, and it makes you know us you know be able to cope and be able to exist and we don't really think about it that much thankfully but I know that 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 perhaps even more so than other children of their age, they're hearing about it and they know about what's happening in the news and around the world. So how do you, how do you bring that into the classroom and not only security wise, keep it safe, but make them feel like they're in a safe space to be able to talk about it and, and, and feel about it. Yeah. Again, it's, it's developmentally appropriate conversations. So mm -hmm. Um, we make sure that the littlest ones, you know, don't really have those conversations yet. Um, but in middle school, they do need to have the conversations about hate. Um, unfortunately, we have a long history of anti-Semitism and hate, and um, a lot of unfortunate things have happened um, in our history. Um, so, of course, we teach about the Holocaust, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, we teach about um, standing up for yourself and being strong and and having a voice. And by the time our kids graduate, they do have a voice. They're very confident. They know who they are. Um, one of our one of our previous board members said we teach the kids who they are before they go out in the world and find out or are told who they're not. Mm. Mm. I like how you said that. Yeah, yeah. I, I really um, I think that's very true. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the graduates go to, you know, big public schools like Grimsley, mm -hmm. and they do they do great there. They are in honors classes, and they are, you know, very confident in who they are, and they're not embarrassed by their religion, mm -hmm. um, and they are awesome. So you're following them. You're keeping up with these oh, students yeah. as they leave. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's always good. Yeah. You know, I'm going to ask you about what's going on, all the exciting things happening, What we can, how can we can hear from, uh, hear about uh, the school. But uh, really quickly, you touched on something. Can you give us 30 seconds, 60 seconds, and talk about the uh, diversity, equity, inclusion, belonging, and justice program? Yes, we could talk about that. I could talk about that with you all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's really an important part of the school. Uh, we have a committee, um, and it's um, co-chaired by two fabulous teachers who have done a lot of professional development. We've encouraged them um, to do as much professional development as they can. And I'm also a fellow in the Other Voices um, program in Greensboro, which has been wonderful, and I'm bringing back what I'm learning you know, to the school as well. But um, we just had a teacher go to Atlanta for a DEI um, conference, and we bring everything back to the teachers. Um, something we're talking about a lot is microaggressions. Mm. Um, our committee's talking about that, and that's going to be something that we're going to be um, teaching our faculty and staff more about. It's just, pre it's, it's always present in mm -hmm. our school, it's part of the culture now. Unfortunately, well, so, yeah. Well, listen, we thank you for taking the time out of your day to come uh, join us here on Talk City Greensboro. Susan Siegel with B'nai Shalom Day School. Um, what's, tell us about the staff really quick. One word, how would you describe the staff? <laughs> fabulous, <laughs> fab, fab Lab and Fab Staff. They are fabulous. <laughs> I love them so much. They are amazing, and they love our kids, and they bring just joy along with the kids every single day to the school. What's the best way to find out more about what's going on at B'nai Shalom? Well, go ahead and check out our website, b'neishalomdayschool.org, and you can see everything that's happening currently and what's coming up. And um, you're welcome to email me at um, my email address at the school, siegel at b'nai-shalom.org. If you want more information, we have an amazing admissions director, Caitlin Cohen-Kivett, who would love to give tours to anyone who wants to come by. All right, and that phone number you can reach out is 336-855-5091, 336-855-5091. Susan, thank you. So glad to have you here today. Thank you both. Mm -hmm. Stay tuned in weekly by subscribing to Talk City Greensboro on iTunes, Pandora, and Google Play. And don't forget, you can download Talk City from SoundCloud. That's it for this week. Thank you for tuning in to Talk City. Hey, if you like what you hear, please share it with a friend. Hey, and don't forget, you can watch GTN. It's your official source for news and information about the city of Greensboro. GTN is available on Spectrum Channel 13. AT&T, UVerse Channel 99, and Lumos 31. GTN also streams live on Roku and the city's website at greensboro-nc.gov. Thank you.